Welcome to Digital Two Foot Traffic. I am Kevin Shee. And I am Scott Jensen. We are digital marketers with massive experience in running brick and mortar stores. Join us each episode as we explore the latest digital marketing trends and uncover strategies from the best in the industry. Welcome to another episode of Digital Two Foot Traffic. I'm your host, Kevin Shee. And I'm Scott Jensen. Happy to be here. Yeah, this is our second episode, and we want to start with uh, website design. I think uh, there's all of different uh, marketing tools that we can talk about later on, but if, without website, there's nothing to market about. Uh, so this is a great place to start. Uh, how do you, uh, you want to tackle this issue? What what does make a good website, especially for retailers, Scott? Well, Kevin, I think you and I think about this very similarly in a lot of ways. I am interested in your thoughts as we start this off on what's the key difference between selling online versus in a physical location. We are talking about driving traffic from digital to a retail location. What do you think the differences are there so we can delineate between those two as we talk about websites specifically? For me, I think uh, if the website has to match uh, locally, so you have to shine in, in, in your area, so you have to have a lot of keywords right that shines in your blog. I mean, you can be very, very, uh, if your website can be very, very nice, but if the guy lives like, you know, five hours down, he's not going to shop from you, right? So so that's number one. And, num- and number two is the conversions. I mean, uh, what we do is we sell something that's, uh, we, we try to bring in foot traffic to the store, right? Whether you're selling, because we're assuming that you don't sell online, right? So you're trying to bring people to your, to your, to your store. And I think, the general question is, uh, what's the conversion? I, can, I think the, the conversion is, I think, for primarily is how, how they get to your store. Or if you're a bit more advanced, as you should be, is to, to reserve whatever. Like to, if, you, if you have a gym, then, then, then to book a, a, a free tour. Or if you have a storage, like a reserve a room online. So that's the next level of conversion. And I think all retailers should be able to funnel those customers to convert within, I don't know, three or four clicks. Is, 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 that, is that something you agree with? Because like if it's an online store, then you have hundreds of inventories and you're trying to sell them online. It's, it's quite different. You're trying to bring them to your store. I think, I think, uh, I think that that's the key difference. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you hit on it exactly. And let's, let's talk about an example here quickly, which is uh, you have call centers as well. And I've run call centers. Part of this is kind of as a natural progression of this. And when you're reserving a storage unit at a call center, it's a very different process than when you're doing it online or at the store. So uh, let me give you an example. So when you go online to reserve a storage unit, you typically ask somebody, where do you want to store? Like, what's the what's the location that you want to store at? And then you ask, what size do they want from there? But when you're doing it at a call center, it's the inverse of that, right? So the first thing that you're asking about is what size do you want or what do you want to store? Do you, are you storing boxes or are you storing a car, whatever it may be? And then that, set, that call center agent is helping that person find a location that fits their needs that's close to them. But be, those two processes are very different, and it's because of the medium. So what I like to suggest is hey, – Sit over the, the shoulder of the person that you that as somebody who's making a reservation using your website or who's looking at your website that you're driving down to your location and listen as they talk themselves through the process. Don't interrupt them. We kind of talked about this in the last episode, but really understand what's the process online versus at your location or at a call center if you happen to have one. And it's very different oftentimes. And so I, that's where I would start is try not to assume that they're all going to be the same. They're actually they're very different in a lot of cases. So that's where I think that you should begin with. Uh, and I think one of the things about this is uh, one thing I, I, I read a long, long time ago, ago is uh, every time a customer clicks to another page, you lose probably one third or 30 percent of all your customers already. So uh, make sure what you know what their question is and get them to there as soon as possible. Uh, I think for, for us, like I run a self-storage chain, as I described last time, is uh, I think what's the, the question would probably in this order would, is there a storage close to me? That's number one. What size do I need? And what's the price or is there any discount? I think those are the questions in the order uh, that I think. So your, 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 your website should be able to answer those questions within one or two or three clicks maximum. So, so that's why we have a huge search, search bar in, in our index page for scstorage.com and because that will lead you to 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 the price and, and and the size right away versus and i guess you've been to our to asia you've seen some of my competitor sites they and i think this is very common like in a lot of the retailers they like to boast what they have it's like we're number one uh, 
we're the biggest in, in Asia. We are uh, we won this award. You know, I just select. Uh, I'm just uh, the businessman of the year. But all this is nice to know, but it's, it's completely irrelevant to the customers. What's in it for me, right? If they can't search what they want within three or four clicks, they're gonna leave. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I think you're right on. So I think the eighty twenty rule definitely applies here, and it's there's a, a process here that that you need to follow. So it starts with building your like defining your customer journey. What is it that you want them to accomplish as they go through? And eighty, you should try to design your site where eighty percent of the people in in our case, and this isn't across for all e retail sites. But about 80 percent of your customers should be trying to accomplish the same thing. And so when you design your site, you should start with a after you do some quantitative and qualitative data. And we can talk about that in more detail. But the next thing is you're defining your brand guidelines. All right. And as you define your brand guidelines, then that those brand guidelines are what carry you through. So they're not only, hey, what are the colors and the fonts I'm going to use? It's what is the voice of my website? Am I going to be? Uh, helpful? Am I going to be knowledgeable? Am I going to be like, what's the voice that you're, that you want? And it should be reflective of your company and what you're trying to. Can you give an example using that with extra space? Because I remember they have uh, extra spaces trying to sell like three themes uh, with that storage that differentiate themselves with other storage companies and how that, how they do that with the, uh, with their website. Yeah. So as we headed up the extra space, which is uh, the self storage REIT in the United States, we looked at three different kind of things that we were that we were trying to talk about which is safe secure and convenient right and the reason why we talked about safety is it's physical safety because females were generally concerned about their physical safety first that was the first thing that they were concerned about uh, so we wanted to address that hey the locations are all safe they and then security is was the next one and we're talking about security for the goods that people were storing and then lastly, we talked about convenient because that's mostly speaking to the men that are looking to store. They know that they have to go do this. It's not something they're looking to do. It's going to be a pain in the ass. It's going to take them all day. And they just want to get in there and do it. In all those cases, though, we chose a voice that we want to speak with. And the voice was kind of that knowledgeable uncle. So everybody has that uncle that if you don't know how to do a particular math problem or you need to change the oil in your car or there's a, a history fact that you you don't understand, everybody has that kind of uncle that you call that you know will know the answer or will be able to help you out with that. because that's And so at Extra Space, we try to use that knowledgeable uncle voice. So they're not condescending. You never feel like... They have a. They are judging you. They're there just to help out, and they they want to care about you. So that's that's kind of the tone and the voice we try to take, and it was part of our brand guidelines. Not everybody has that. If you think about other companies that you know, think about what what's the feeling or the voice that you hear when you talk to them, whether that be your cable company, whether that be your the car that you drive. Every car has a particular voice or a brand that it's trying to sell. So when you're designing a website, you want to define your brands. Uh, your brand and have those brand guidelines, which is the voice that you're talking from. Is it going to be loud and fun? Is it going to be snarky? Is it going to be kind of like a grandma voice? Is it, what, What's the voice that you're going to have? And from that, then you define your calls to action. So getting back to this, this idea that your primary call to action should be the same color, it should be the same shape, it should be relatively in the same place on each page to kind of train people through. A really good example of this is adobe.com. If you haven't been to Adobe.com, I'd go there. Uh, and you can see re- without reading anything, without looking at anything, you know exactly where you're supposed to click. And within three clicks, you get to the point where you can purchase what you go to Adobe for. It's super easy to find your way through. But you'll see that 80% of the people who go there, they have that path defined. And there's one color that's used. It's one shape. It's in the same position almost every single time to go through that. You can have secondary and tertiary calls to action which are going to help the other 20% of your customers to your site find what they're looking for. But the majority of your customers in this particular case should follow a single flow and you should make that easy for them to get through. Okay. And I guess another thing important about uh, uh, like retailers who do marketing with the website is the consistency of their brand coloring and their, and, and their image as you have described. So basically if you have a store that's green, then your website should be green. I mean, 
uh, some of the uh, uh, unique selling points that you say on the website. Your maybe your staff should memorize that and, and, and elaborate on that. Like so, people would get the same consistency feeling on website as well as in in your store as well as your call center. So that's one flow. I remember when I was running self storage, um, we have one campaign every year, different themes, and when we have a TV campaign, it should match the website campaign, like the index page, and then that that should match with the with the with our or their staff like uh, selling it. So. Uh, Everything should be inconsistent, both online and offline. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Because do you want to think of it as an extension of your sales staff, right? Yeah. And the way you and I have talked about this before is if you walk into a used car dealer to buy a used car and the the salesperson walks up to you and hands you their business card and the logo on that car doesn't match the logo on the door or on the building, yeah. what's what your hell? first reaction? <laughs> Exactly yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't yeah. like, something's not right here. It causes you to. Yeah. It's right. It causes you to pause or must, must to, be an OTA. <laughs> <laughs> that's so it. that's what yeah. we're trying to do. Is we're trying to eliminate yeah. that that yeah. pause or that that yeah. chance to hesitate and make, and people naturally do it when something doesn't add up or doesn't seem right. Then people will pause, and that's the, what we're trying to avoid. Let, let's get some. Uh, you're right. Uh, low hanging fruits. I mean, websites these days, I think, are two important things. Uh, one is uh, mobile, because I think mobile conversion accounts for almost 70%. Uh, there's a difference between mobile and conversion, and, and that's a bit of an advanced topic in the sense that maybe people search when they're taking the, the train or something to work, but they do convert at night in, on a desktop. So that's something we can talk about later. And the other thing is speed. I remember Amazon is one second. A lot of uh, these uh, top websites is only one second. What kind of what what kind of patience does customers have these days? Can you elaborate on these two? Yeah, you're exactly right. So there's four or five things here that I think that we want to touch on real quickly, which is uh, speed is king. If you talk to Google, they are all about how do we make sites faster because they feel like for every second, then then people drop off and they have a bunch of studies that you can go out and find on those and, and we can try to post those as well. So to the point that Google thinks that speed is so important that they've come out with two new development platforms. Uh, one is called AMP, Accelerated Mobile Pages, and one is called PWA, mm -hmm. Progressive Web App. And these two are both meant to speed up mobile and uh, the mobile experience. We are going to have an entire episode on PWA and AMP, and I have a, an expert on those two that I'm going to invite to come in and, and talk about that. So I don't want to get into it in too much detail, Great. but yes, is, is number one here. And you, you've got to have it. The point I want to make here, though, is that for if mobiles, re, we know that mobiles, as you said, that it has a, a, the largest share of search on it now. Um, most people have a mobile device that they're that they're searching on for these things, and yet we still make the mistake when we're designing websites that we start with desktop, and then you try to take desktop and scale it down for mobile, which is the exact wrong way to do it. If we're really going to make mobile first, then you start with your mobile design, mm, which is a more simple design. And then you design your desktop design from your mobile design, not the other way around. I wonder how many agencies, when, and when you're trying to uh, ask them to do a website for you, they show you their mobile site first, then they expand to the desktop, uh, maybe 10% or less. <laughs> yeah. Very, very few. Yes, yeah. I have this experience all the time. And I tell them, hey, we want to go mobile first, mobile first. And then, yeah, they'll show up with their desktop designs and I'll yeah. send them away and say, no, come back with mobile. <laughs> Talk about desktop. Absolutely. So but, uh, you start with your mobile designs yeah. because they have to be simpler. They have to be more economical from yeah. a design standpoint. And then you can add on the, the desktop stuff. Because remember, you said it exactly right. People, they want the quick, easy information. They're on the train. They are commuting. They're uh, sitting out on the lunch break on their on their phone. If they need more information, then they'll save it for later. And you want to yeah. be sure to add that button to to your mobile site. And they'll go home when they're on a desktop or on a bigger screen and research in more depth. But for the most part, a make it mobile. The other thing is that people forget about this is mo your mobile device is still a phone. Yeah. And people call a yeah. lot. Uh, and so you want to make sure that your phone number is prominent, that people can get to it, and that you can track that that's what's happening is that people are calling from your mobile device website yeah and see how they convert yeah uh, i remember you have a, a point about the, the thumb theory if the thumb can't reach it you know so the telephone number must be within the reaching reaching distance of your thumb especially those big screen uh, mobile phones <laughs> and the yeah. other the, the other thing i was, was uh, thinking about is uh maybe maybe the the, the index page for uh, for the desktop should remember what you saved like 
like for example, hotels.com, if you were looking for like a hotel suite in Hawaii and, uh, and all that on your mobile and you go back at night, maybe they should come back and say, hey, hey, welcome back, uh, Scott, or whatever. Uh, uh, this is the this is the page we were looking at before. So so maybe this kind of like a re- remembrance of uh, of what you've searched prior using mobile and uh, would increase conversion later on at night. So, so, so desktop do still play a part, I think, but uh, maybe in, in, in the last phase of the funnel, but not, not the beginning. Yeah, I agree. So there's a phrase we use when designing that we want to, what we call surprise and delight, right? So there's, and that's a, there's a fine border between creeping people out, yeah. but there is, you want to create an experience that surprises people and delights them with, with something. We've all been had that experience where we check into a hotel and they've left flowers or something for your significant other, uh, or they left chocolates or you come back to your room at night and there's a chocolate on the bed that you weren't expecting some kind of experience. You're like, Oh, this is something different. And I remember that you're trying to create that. And it's so easy to do with your website. There's a, a, a hundred things that you can do today to create an experience that somebody to remember and that they'll want to come back for. You just listed one, Hotels.com. They do some great things out there to surprise and delight customers, and there's a bunch of other sites that do as well. I would challenge people on this is think about, hey, what's your favorite website or, or, or web experience? Why is it your favorite experience? And I'm almost sure everybody's going to say, oh, it's because they did this that really caught my attention, and they predicted what I was going to need. I was reading an article today about Tesla uh, the car company and how in future models, you won't have to tell your car where you need to go because it will predict where you want to go already. <laughs> uh, <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> and absolutely. I can see that happening. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, let's talk about keeping your content fresh. I mean, if I own a store, like just say if I own a gym, for example, right for SEO, I, I will get some basic SEO here. Uh, you, you need a lot of fresh content on your website to attract customers from coming back or even like potential customers from coming back and you need fresh contents to keep it fresh. Uh, what are some of the strategies for you to keep on uh, updating your, your website? If I own a storage company, I mean, well, how, how fresh could it be? Uh, should I list my occupancy right there or something like that? Or should I have like a different <laughs> different sales promotion every month or something like that? What are some of the strategies, especially for like like a small scale retailer who has like one or two people doing the marketing? Uh, what, what can they do? Yeah, so I think the, the trick here is and I don't, I think it's fairly well known, but it's what I find is even people who've been doing this a while forget that content is really what the search engines are looking for is let's say they have a hundred things that they're looking for, for your particular business. And I like the idea of a gym first. So if you have a gym, then they're looking for a hundred different data points of those data points, probably 40 to 50 of those, they are, they're basically checking off a list. Does this gym talk about their hours of operation? Do they talk about their location? Do they talk about uh, what machines they have? Do they talk about what classes they have? All those kind of things that they expect all gyms to talk about. And it's kind of a checklist. Hey, did, this gym is in the fitness category and therefore as part of the fitness category for it to be considered within within our rankings, it needs to check off these certain set of boxes, which you have to have to kind of qualify or play in the game. The second piece, though, is... They're looking for something that's unique to that business. Now, it's not a gym that's going out and posting stock reports, all right, because the search engines understand that you're a gym and that nobody is going to come to your site to look for stock reports, all right, Mm -hmm. or or ticker symbols. What they're looking for is how does that gym relate to that community, all right? Is it posting about the local marathon race, all right? All right, so maybe there's a... There's uh, the Chinese New Year and there's a marathon that's that's associated with the Chinese New Year. Is that gym talking about, hey, this is how you prepare for the upcoming marathon. Say this is a four month training schedule for for the upcoming marathon. That would be local content that's specified to the gym, but it's also to your specific location, your specific yeah. geography. Yeah. That's a great piece of content that you would have. These are the the. 10 things you need to do for that. So it has to be related to your storage and your location at the same time, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Whether that be self storage or a gym or a flower shop or yeah. any local business, the search engine is smart enough to know where you're located, what yeah. type of business you're in. And if you start posting about things that aren't related to those two, you're yeah. not going to get any credit for them. Best case scenario, worst case scenario, you could be penalized for them. Like uh, like a gambling site, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, can we talk about like once you build a site? Uh, I think the next thing is to set up uh, conversions. I mean, conversions is really important. Uh, if you don't know if your customers are converting, then you don't know where to shoot, right? Can you can you can you run through this a bit? I mean, uh, I think the basic most uh, for retailers is to uh, you know about us make a reservation. I think would, would would be a good conversion. But I had I fall in a lot of this trap recently. We have a new website up with our with our box storage, and uh, and I forgot to tell you this, but uh, we just removed our telephone number. Uh, we like before like we, we weren't getting enough data, so anybody who uh, pressed the call button uh, would be converting, and oh, we're getting so many false data, right? So to 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 yep. reduce that. We only put like we, we hide the last two budget uh, last two digit and then when people pressed on it we said are you sure you want to call and then we, we asked them to press yes again right still we're getting a lot of bad data I don't know why people like to call for no reason but uh <laughs> but uh but it's only until after we uh, transfer the SC storage format in which you know they press the call and then they come in and we give them a link at on the site and they they, they press that link again in the actual store. Did we get much much more accurate data? But I guess that's a bit more advanced for for some of the smaller re- retailers. So can you elaborate some, some something on, on on conversions and what to do and why you need it and 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 for retailers, what what some of the basic ones? This is a very uh, can be from very basic to very advanced. Yeah, yeah. So let's. Uh, you're exactly right. And Kevin, you have been very forward thinking on this for yeah. some time, and, and we've had I've a been, lot of I've been, I've been scammed by, by so many people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that you laugh about it, but it's a, it's a real source of frustration yeah. and a concern. So you're the kind of the guinea pig for all these other yeah. people out there. Yeah. So you're right. There's the way I like to think about this is there's three different types of conversions, right? There's an online conversion where somebody's yep. buying or making a reservation on your website. Yeah. There's the phone conversion where somebody comes to your website. Yeah. They call you or your call center. And they make a reservation or something there. And then there's those people who go to your website, may or may not call your call center, and then just show up at your location. Exactly. Right? Yep. And there's various levels to track each one of those things. It, you can get very, very precise with all three, but it costs some money to do so. Yep. So we'll talk about the cheap ways, and then we can give some hints as to the more expensive ways. The online one, I think, is pretty straightforward. It's a matter of tagging your website with some conversion events. Yep. Uh, Ad, Google AdWords will do it. it pretty easy and straightforward most web designers can figure that out but you have to define this is what a conversion is yeah. on the website the second one is a call and there's some there are some kind of drag and drop solutions right now where you can place uh, where you can track a phone call and then they can put a timer on it for example and say hey if a call is over a certain period of time then we're going to count it as a conversion wow if that's it's great. a certain period of time yeah then it won't count so in the case of say storage if it's over say seven minutes, yeah. then we're going to say, "Hey, that counts as a conversion." But if it's under seven minutes, it isn't. Uh, there are more sophisticated models that will track from the keyword uh, to the phone call, and then the call center agent it creates a session, and then the call center agent or the the person at the location that phone call is tied to that session, and when they make a conversion that way, then it tracks through to a conversion, so you get more precise that way. Yeah, uh, those systems exist. I built a couple of those systems now. And they work really well, but they they do cost a little bit of money to go out and build. The third way is is like somebody visiting your website and then going down to your location uh, yep. and converting there. There are a couple different ways to do this. First of all, Google's getting really good, uh, and you and everybody can see this because when you start to going, you show up at say Starbucks or at a restaurant, then Google kind of prompts you through Google Maps on your phone to say, hey, are you at Starbucks? Would you like to rate this place? It's because Google knows you're there. And the reason why they're doing that is because from my standpoint as an advertiser, uh, Google's saying, hey, our display ads work really well. In fact, we can prove it. We showed uh, your display ad to 200 people. And of those 200 people, 75 showed up at your location within the next week. Yeah. And so they can, And so we want credit for that conversion that happened. That's starting to happen more and more. You'll see Facebook doing it, other advertisers doing it as well, where they can track to your location and then they can turn around to the advertisers and, and give you a report back on that. That's one way. The second way, which is a little bit more sophisticated, is going through RFDI readers, which are your, every phone sends out an RFDI yeah. tag or signal. And you can match that up. So when somebody walks in your store, you can most RFDA tags or, or phones are broadcasting all the time. You can read that signal, and then you can go back and match that up to their online profile. It's more expensive. Uh, they have to buy the RFDA 
readers. You have to go out and build the databases. You have to do the, the matching behind. But it is possible to do, and there's a number of companies that are doing it out right now. So there's three or four different ways to kind of go about that, from the really simple up to the more complex, just depending on how sophisticated you want to be. But you are exactly right. You want to know where your money's going, and so you want to be as precise as you can be. And I think the ma- major thing is uh, if you know uh, what brings in the big box, then you know which which channel is working or not, and you can do a lot of testing. You know which agencies to hire, so so you know you, you know what you want, right? Because um, and I can share from experience. I, I uh, I've been I, I learned this the hard way. I mean, uh, uh, some some people tell us that uh, as a self storage, we're we're not an online store, which is wrong. <laughs> uh, so anybody who looked at more than four pages would uh, be considered as a conversion. But uh, at the same time, we hired a quite pretty model to, to, to be in one of our campaign. So as a result, we um, uh, there's a lot of people kind of converting into that uh, display ad. And I thought it was uh, it was going to uh, equal rental. But in fact, it was just those people looking in, uh, looking at that pretty girl. They, they were converting. So so setting up your, your conversion was uh, is really, really critical. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what, what do you say to those people who has like one or two store? I know I know a few guys in Hong Kong. They don't even bother having a website. They just have a Facebook page. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> yeah, come to my store on Facebook. And <laughs> so they just have a Facebook fan page. Is is that a very uh, you don't want you don't want to have your livelihood depend on other people's platform? Is is is, is that your answer? Or what do you what, what do you think of that? You know, I think a little bit. It depends on the business a little bit and where your customers come from. For example, if you are a nail salon. Yeah, like where you're, and you have a particular following. You cater to a specific type of person. Okay, and there's enough of those people that are on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. There's, I, you could make an argument for that, and I think you go along with that. Um, I know, for example, I've done some work with some full companies that do eyelashes. They okay. for women that they do the fake eyelashes, and they only have an Instagram account. Wow. Oh, okay. They don't have a website. They just have an Insta or a Facebook page. Even they just have an Instagram account where they have their information, their profile, and they're they're constantly promoting it. You get six or seven or eight different pictures of, of women's eyelashes every single day. Yeah. And they do it all through Instagram. So, I per, I personally would feel uncomfortable having all of my eggs in one basket, and I would mm-hmm. like some differentiation there. But I can see that there's a, a case for an argument for for doing just in one platform for sure. Okay. Any, any other thing you want to add with this uh, website design topic that we're talking about today? Oh, I think this is a uh, like I said, we're going to go into some more detail on things like yep. uh, mobile a- or AMP and PWA sites. Uh, we talked a little bit about brand guidelines, and we should probably spend and, and bring some experts on about how to set those up and go yep. as we get deeper into this. Yep. But no, the other <laughs> thing I would ta- I'd talk about is one of the things that we've gone back and forth on is uh, building your site for SEO versus paid search. Okay. Uh, and it's worthy of another topic. And I don't want to keep saying, hey, keep listening, keep listening, because it sounds like I'm teasing all of our future podcasts. <laughs> but there is definitely a, an entire conversation around this. But just a quick overview is a, you you build your SEO content for a path uh, where people are coming down and they start kind of at a high funnel where they're exploring and then they they leave and possibly they come back not maybe one visit but it may be over a longer period of time depending on your product if you're buying a car it usually takes several months versus if you're buying uh, a pair of earrings it's something that's significantly less time in in most cases but from an seo standpoint you start from the high funnel where you're trying to differentiate between everybody else and, and bring them down yeah we were just talking to a friend of yours about hotels and when i yep. when you're searching for to- hotels and you happen to be on vacation right now and in, uh, in vietnam right and yep. you went through this process right where you're trying to decide hey we want to go on vacation okay yep. great where do we want to go and you yep. have your choice of a bunch of different places yep. and you narrow it down okay i want to go to vietnam once yep. you decide on vietnam then you have to decide hey i've got my kids yep. and my wife so do yep. i want to stay in a resort do i want to stay yep. in a hotel do i want to want to rent a house all of that is a, a kind of an SEO process, whereas paid search, you it's more defined and you can typically direct people to a specific, it, it's much more finite and you can specifically direct people to a particular product without having to kind of bring them down because they're searching for it that way. So what you, Not always, but yeah. there are some cases there that you could build up two different pages or paths or funnels on your website depending on that, uh, because you can know a lot more about your, your paid search customers. So, so what you mean is if I'm searching in general, if I have no idea what I'm looking for right now, I would search like various terms like Vietnam, family, vacation, like 
like so, something, right? And I would look for like uh, contents or blogs to describe something that fits my need, right? So those are more like SEO related in certain in the sense that I would I would write up a lot of content pieces that 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 would drive people to my to my store. Is that what it is? Versus if I were just yeah. if I were just uh, optimizing for uh, for for a specific room or specific. Uh, Thing, then I would I would have like I would have all the right keywords uh, that I'm I'm, uh, I'm bidding like that I'm bidding for that matches exactly on the landing page so that the bounce rate gets reduced and the quality score goes up. Is that what you're saying? Yep. 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 You're you're right on. So, so, sounds a bit technical, but but uh, so basically we need to have as many different websites for different types of customers that needs to to come in, right? I wouldn't say websites as much web, as web pages. <laughs> pages, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Pages, pages uh, and funnels within your website, exactly. Yeah. And I guess more uh, a more advanced uh, thing that would lead to this is uh, you can estimate how much money they're going to spend based on what website or what content they're reading at. For example, for self storage, if they're a business customer that stores documents, they're going to be like fifty percent spending more uh, uh, with us than regular customers. So for that, then we we would probably even lower the price or call them uh, twice as much. Uh, because we know eventually we'll get our money back. So these are more of the advanced technique for uh, website design based on the lifetime value of the customer. Oh, yeah. Now you're teasing future episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just elaborating on what, what, what you said before. But, uh, but yeah, so, so I think we cover a lot today. So I think the next episode will be on SEO. Is it is, is it, it? Yeah, we'll uh, working on uh, have that person committed and, okay. and we'll have them on next time. Okay, so yeah, stay tuned. Uh, we just have our website up. It's called digital to foot traffic.com do leave us a comment uh our, our our facebook and our website is pretty uh, basic right now we're, we're just starting this podcast so we will build in advance please leave us a message uh do rate us in, in itunes uh, and we'll keep on uh, bringing out new guests and new contents and hope uh, everybody can benefit sounds good good talking to you kevin all right thanks a lot thank you for listening to digital to foot traffic join our mailing list at digital to foot traffic.com for more of our digital insights and strategies. Leave us a review on iTunes or your favorite Android apps and subscribe so we'll show you the second we launch a new episode.